So, hi everyone, back with part two of the setup video. So, in the last video, we looked at some details all about getting our setup and our basics right. Now, if you haven't seen that video, you can click up here and that will take you to the first part of this little video series about setup. And in this one, we're going to look at some other details that are really important. Remember, if you do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just really helps me to keep all this content coming. Okay, so we've got our two grips, and you can find which one feels most comfortable for you, which one would you like to set on so that it feels like that's going to give you the most control when you're playing. And then we need to decide, well, where does my hand actually go on the back of the cue? Now, lots of players just naturally like to hold the cue right at the back, and that's where they hold their grip, right at the butt end of the cue there, right at the back. But actually, for many, many players, that's not actually the correct place to be holding the cue. So where we hold on the back of the, the butt end of the cue here is going to be dictated by how long this bridge length is, how tall we are, how long our arms are, all kinds of things is going to decide where this grip needs to go. So the first thing to look at and what we need to decide is how long our bridge distance is going to be. Now this is the distance from the V that we form when we form our, our bridge hand on the table and we've got what we call the V for the cue to rest in and the distance from that V to where the cue tip is at the cue ball. So when we're in that address position and the tip is pointing at the cue ball, how long is that distance? How far do we want it? Now for most players, I'm going to advise that you do about 10 to 12 inches. You don't need to go any shorter than 10 inches because the problem with that is on higher power shots, you haven't got enough room to pull the cue all the way back when you need to generate more power. And if you go too far back, if you go any further than 12 inches, some players are around 13, but as you start to go further than that, you then start to get lots of, you can introduce that lateral movement with the cue, so the cue can move from left to right, it's just not as stable. So in an ideal world, obviously, we'd love to get the, the hand as close to the cue ball as you possibly could, that's going to mean that the cue can hardly move about at all, but the problem is it's a balancing act because we need that hand far enough away so that when we need to do a power shot, we can pull the cue right back and get through the cue ball. So as I say there, you need to settle on what you think is a nice bridge distance for you where you feel nice and comfortable. Remember, this bridge distance also influences how far away your head is from the cue ball when you're down on the shot. So if I'm really close to the white with my hand on, closer to the cue ball, as I get further away, my head is now further away from the cue ball. So your bridge distance also influence, influences how you sight a shot. So it, again, it's important to try and find what suits you there. And then when you've found something that you feel comfortable with and you think, okay, I'm going to settle on 11 inches, that looks good to me. What I always say to players is you can then take a measurement, use a very soft grade pencil so you're not going to damage the cue, and you can actually draw round your cue, just form a little line round your cue, and make a mark at where that bridge distance needs to go. That'll mean then that whenever you get into a shot when you're practicing, you can have a look, you can see whether your hand has gone behind that mark, whether it's in front of that mark, but by having that mark on, you now can keep that hand in a consistent place for all of your shots. Right, so you've settled on your bridge distance, we've got that marked on the cue, and now we need to decide exactly where our grip hand is going at the back of the cue. Now, we always want, as close as we can, to get our back arm as vertical as we possibly can, when the cue tip is at the cue ball. So when I'm down on a shot, I've got my cue pointing at the cue ball, I don't want my back arm too far back to begin with, and I don't want it forward of vertical to begin with as well. So I try to keep it in that neutral point in the middle. And the reason that's so important is because that means in that neutral position that you can do a nice back swing when you need to, and then also, as you're hitting the cue ball, it gives you enough room to then go forward and carry on and do your follow through as well. If I was to have my arm starting already too far forward, the problem would be by the time I'd done my backswing and then got back to the cue ball and hit the shot, I would only end up with a very small follow through. And that doesn't help us to get the spin that we need on the white ball when we're playing all of our positional shots. The same again, if you have your arm too far back to begin with, so if you're already quite a bit behind vertical, it means that when you're trying to pull the cue back, you've got no more room to pull the cue back and you can't do a, a good, nice backswing length. Again, 
allowing you to push the cue right through and get the spin on the cue ball. So as close to vertical as possible, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but that's what we're aiming for, as close to vertical. So we already know that, let's say for example, now that I've got my bridge length marked at 11 inches, what I then need to do is practice getting down on the shot with my bridge length in the right place. And now I need to find with my backhand, where does it need to go on the back of the cue so that it's in a nice vertical position when I'm down on the shots. Now I would advise here to get a friend to have a look at you, or you could even use your smartphone, try and get a camera and film yourself down on the shot. And then you can find your position on the back of the cue that's gonna keep that hand in a nice vertical position. Again, what I'm always doing here then with uh, pupils that I'm working with on the table is I'll use some tape and just mark it around the back of the cue and then you've got a position that you can butt your hand up to the back of that tape each time and you know that your hand is going in an absolutely consistent position every time you play shots. So as I say, we've now got a nice neat setup and the only thing to add here is remember that these points that we've now marked on the cue are only for our standard shots on the table. So when we can comfortably form our normal stance, we can get down into the address position exactly like we were demonstrating in this section of the video. We want our grip position and our bridge length and our arm all in those correct points and our stance, but sometimes shots dictate that we can't have those same measurements. So let's say, for example, I've got a shot and I'm trying to bridge off the cushion. That would mean that my bridge length at the front has gone a lot shorter. So the distance between my V and the cue ball now is much reduced because the cue ball is close to the side cushion. And that means that I can't now hold at my tape because my arm would be too far back. I've got to shuffle my hand forward the same distance that my bridge length has reduced. So remember, these two distances are always within reference to each other. If you need to reduce this one and it goes shorter, this has got to come further forward. If you're stretching and you need to have a longer bridge, then your hand has got to move further back on the cue. Now there's three important things I wanted to talk about with setup now on the shot. And these are important because lots of players don't do all of these things naturally, necessarily. So the first one is that you want some of your weight leaning forward onto your bridge hand on the table. So when you form your stance, just like we've talked about earlier, and you've got this arm on the table, you want to feel like if you were to try and lift up off the table, you would want to fall back down slightly. So you've just got a little bit of your weight leaning forward onto that bridge hand. And that's important because that's going to give you that nice solid base of the stance that we talked about earlier. And a bit like forming a tripod, you've then got this front part nice and stable on the table as well. And that gives you a nice solid base. Now, the second thing to remember is that this forearm, so your leading arm, so for a right-handed player, it's going to be my left arm. You all always want to get this forearm flat to the table whenever you possibly can. You don't want it floating off the table, hovering up in the air. You want it nice and flat on the table and that's going to give you extra stability when you're playing shots. So sometimes when I'm coaching and working with players on the table, I'll notice that some players for some reason just naturally like to have that hand, that forearm just floating off the table and it's not placed nice and steady on the table. So always try and get that that forearm planted on the table, that gives you that nice, secure, again, solid base so that you've got your feet planted, a little bit of weight on the bridge hand and the forearm on the table and everything's nice and solid and stable. Now the third thing, and this is probably the most important about setup, is the position of our shoulders when we're down on the shot. Now lots of players don't do this naturally and that is that they don't twist their shoulders enough. So if my two hands were my shoulders here, Lots of players get down and the shoulders are almost next to each other like this. But what we're actually trying to do as snooker players is get the right shoulder twisted back and twist the shoulders so that the one shoulder is behind the other one. Now I've got this straight shot on this red set up to the middle here to show you exactly what I mean about the rotation of the shoulders. What lots of players tend to do naturally is they'll get down and the shoulders will be very square and you can probably see my right shoulder is sticking out and my back is very flat when I'm down on the shot. And it means that when you're doing it that way, your cue is a little bit underneath yourself and you're not getting your cue locked against your chest as well as it could be. So very important to try and rotate those shoulders. So this is what you see lots of players doing naturally. They just get down and they play a shot 
like that without the shoulders rotated very much. But what we're going to try and do is really get those shoulders rotated. And the way I always describe this to players is I'm going to try and get my chest, which at the moment is facing the camera here. I'm looking right at the, at the camera with my chest, but I want my chest to be facing over at this wall over here. So when I walk into the shot, I'm going to twist my shoulders, as you can see there, this right shoulder is going right up behind my head like that. And that gets everything perfectly in line. I've now got the cue against my chest here and I can pull back, play the shot, and I've got everything locked in and it's much more secure like that. As always, I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, remember to give the video a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do make new uploads every single week. Now, if anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, I'm available working with players full-time on the table, helping them to improve their game. So if you look in the description box below, you'll see details for my website there and my email address, and you can contact me, and I'd love to help. And as always, thanks for watching the video, everybody. Stay safe. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.